first things first, these are some really good games. If I'm being completely honest, these are actually great games, according to the majority of gamers and review sites alike. I mean, some of these are Game of the Year winners, and you're going to find them consistently at or near the top of Best of System X lists all across the internet. What's up, guys? My name is Chris, and today on CrossChop, we're going to see if we can figure out what it was about these games that caused me not to like them. Let's see if we can figure this out. Number five on this list is Batman Arkham City. <gasps> After I finished up Arkham Asylum, I was convinced that the Batman that Rocksteady Studios had created for that game was the premier third-person superhero action game, and I wanted more. So, as those of you who have played Arkham City know, when I first dove into that game, I got what I wanted, and then some. A huge open world with plenty of new DC villains and heroes included a bunch of new satisfying combos and combat elements, even more collectibles, and of course, a brand new Batman original story. I should have loved this game, right? Although Arkham City did have puzzles and some of the confined tunnels and hallways that I loved so much in Arkham Asylum, something about the bleakness of the open world and its repetitive environments and things like that just really didn't sit right with me. As I played, it honestly got kind of overwhelming and boring. Sometimes repetition works well in games, and other times it makes you just want to slam your controller down and fight your dad. Unfortunately for me, Arkham City's wealth of content and its smooth gameplay couldn't outweigh its weaker story, its repetitive environments, and the overall sense of repetition that I got from it. It just didn't quite work the same way for me that Arkham Asylum did when I emerged victorious from that game. Number four is Super Mario 3D World. Before I bought my Wii U for Christmas in 2014, Super Mario 3D World was one of my most anticipated games for that system. I had recently completed Super Mario 3D Land for the 3DS and I loved it. I liked 3D Land so much that I went back and revisited dozens of levels trying to get the best score that I could or a three-star rating on as many levels as possible. When I finally got my hands on 3D World, I just kept waiting for the sense of rhythm and the fun aspect that I typically associate always with Mario platforming games, and I just didn't get it. Now, to be fair, I did play this game cooperatively with my girlfriend, so that was definitely a factor in this. And we did have fun playing it, but she even agreed with me that there was something missing from it. It just felt a little too bleh. I was kind of bothered by this, so I went back and played a good amount of levels solo to see if I was missing something or if something would finally click for me, and it didn't. Although I had fun with it, I was left with this kind of sinking feeling of mediocrity. As a result of that mediocrity, I think I would now rank 3D World at the bottom of the totem pole of the free-roaming 3D Mario games. I think Mario Sunshine is better, Super Mario 64, the Galaxy games, and of course the aforementioned 3D Land too. I kind of feel like a traitor. Number three is Grand Theft Auto 4. GTA during the PS2 era was glorious. We were given three unique games, each with its own personality. Each one also had new gameplay elements, and my personal favorite was Vice City, with its abundant neon, its kick-ass 80s soundtrack, and a very clever, insomnious rendition of Miami, Florida. <sighs> Sadly, the amount of fun I had with this era was not meant to proliferate when GTA 4 rolled into town. Since I bought my PS3 in 2011, I have attempted to inject myself into Liberty City and into the shoes of Nico Bellic, the fictional protagonist of GTA 4, no fewer than three times. With each playthrough I started, I kept hoping that something would snap into place and I'd finally realize what I'd been missing out on. As I'm sure you've guessed, that tragically never happened, and after some thought, I've come up with a few reasons that I think that that might have occurred with this particular GTA entry. First, there's the visual design. It's true, the game is almost eight years old now, but my problems with the visual aesthetic deal more with kind of the bland palette and the repetitive environments in the overall Liberty City world. And speaking of boredom, that brings me to my second point, Nico Bellic himself. I just never really felt like I could connect with Nico. His plight of being a mobster just didn't really resonate with me. I didn't like being stuck playing as this character in this game. So maybe I'll like GTA 5 more. I haven't tried that one yet. But Nico Bellic just gave me a Nico belly egg. Stupid. Number two, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. True to its legacy, this is bound to be a controversial one. My lackluster experience with old Conquer and his notorious Bad Fur Day may 
simply have been a case of me missing the boat when the game originally launched back in 2001. After all, Conker's has pretty much all of the elements of classic N64 rareware titles that I played the crap out of when I could, but excluding some of the more talked about story moments like the Sunflower and facing off against the Great Mighty Pooh, making progress in this game often felt like a chore to me. Sure, it has some of the best graphics on the system and really high quality voice acting and became almost an instant cult classic because of its nearly incessant toilet humor, but is it really that funny anymore? Is it possible that some of the nostalgia associated with this game is due to the fact that it was an off-limits type of game to many of the gamers playing on the N64 back in 2001, taunting us with its cool big brother allure from behind the glass at Walmart? I'm not certain, and perhaps I'll give it another try down the road, but for now I think I'll stick with Donkey Kong 64 and the Banjo-Kazooie games. And number one, Chrono Trigger DS. Disclaimer. I've only played this version of Chrono Trigger so far, so my feelings toward it are probably impacted by the handheld format. Just saying. I also need to emphasize that I do respect this game immensely, and I really want to play it on the Super Nintendo once I get a copy of it. I just didn't have the unforgettable, timeless experience with this version that all the review sites and other gamers and top 10 lists led me to believe that I probably would have. For one thing, I think the soundtrack by Yasunori Mitsuda and Nobuo Uematsu is astoundingly strong. The combat system and the combo attacks are really satisfying to use, and the art style is a gorgeous sample of some of the best that the 16-bit era had to offer. Honestly, what I think didn't click for me was the in-depth, somewhat demanding storyline being delivered to me in a handheld format and being distracted by console games and other things going on that I wanted to devote my time to probably wasn't the best way for me to experience this game for the first time. Till we meet again, Chrono Trigger. Now that we've gotten these out of the way, what are some games that you thought you would enjoy and wound up not really liking so much? Let me know in the comments below of some games that you thought you would dive into and really like, but wound up not really enjoying so much either. Thanks once again for stopping by, guys, and if this was your first cross-shop video and you liked what you saw, please subscribe. Thanks for hanging out at Cross Chop today and play heavy.